Welcome. This last part of Mark chapter 9, we're actually almost finished with it, probably in this video right here, um, was one of the most difficult things that we don't understand. <laughs> you know, it's one of the most difficult sayings in, in the book of Mark. Um, it is, as a matter of fact, a lot of it isn't even mentioned in Matthew or uh, Luke, not, not exactly like this. Uh, one, he mentions fire, which, I, I mean, I understand some of this. I understand a lot of what he meant by fire. But in relation to this particular uh, thing, um, he, here, here's his saying. It says, um, for everyone shall be salted with fire. What? <laughs> salt. We have salt here. Salt. And then we have fire, you know. Um, or it could be like a combination. Well, f he's not mentioning light here, but here's a, here's a light bulb with salt in it, given by a dear friend to me. Um, right here, uh, here's salt, and there's a light bulb. But this salt thing, really challenging. Like, what does he mean? And I think, by the way, it's possible that salt... Uh, that well, some of the things that Jesus says can have multiple meanings, or at least two or three or whatever. So in the, pa the last passage, if you remember, he said he talked about hell, and just something the real quick thing about the Gehenna, uh, Gehenna and Gehenna. This is actual spelling, and then it's the English word Gehenna. Um, uh, it's it brings weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said. By the way, and uh, this is tears, a lot of sadness right here. But hell is real. But I, he's not talking about hell here. Um, I think he, he took the word fire from this last verse of the Gehenna, and he went into the fire for this next verse. Or maybe Mark kind of put this, these sayings, seven, three different things about salt here. And has each thing is different. And he put it together, he kind of combined them. But it's real possible, in my opinion, Jesus literally said it this way. But, um, and helped him to remember it. You know, Jesus used very cool ways of teaching so they remember it. But hell is, has to do with torments and it's eternal and it's awful. It's really terrible. It's super sad. It's real. Hell is a real place. When Jesus mentioned uh, real uh, fire and he mentioned, uh, what did he say there? Like, um, uh, yeah, worm dies not. The worms uh, were eating the little maggot things, were eating the decaying flesh, whether it be an animal or, you know, the excrement, the dung, the waste of humans and all. Anyway, but, but anyway, it's very real and it brings a lot of sadness. Sadness to God for sure, definitely, and sadness uh, to us thinking about what hell's like anyway so he mentions that in the last verse then he switches from fire of hell into this fire and again he said this really interesting phrase it says for everyone shall be salted with fire now that everyone i don't think he's necessarily talking about everyone now i think he's talking about his disciples here the believers in jesus followers of christ everyone who's following christ shall be salted with fire salt and fire very interesting uh, well, what was salt used for in that day? Well, here's a little list here. I've actually taught this before, uh, maybe added a little bit more, but it was definitely used as it is today for flavoring. Certain foods just taste better with salt. <laughs> and it's cook, cooking is used, salt is used in cooking. You know, you kind of put a little salt on that, tastes really good. I don't know, you may not like this, but I like my salt on corn. I like it on cucumbers. I like it on apples. I'm not a crazy, crazy about apples, but just add that little salt. Boy, that's a change it. And many other foods. So salt adds flavor. Now, by the way, Jesus did say, you are the salt of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. So this is talking to believers and Christians. So we add flavor. We're seasoning to the world. Our love, our word should be seasoned with grace, it says in another passage. But anyway, preserving, um, because they didn't have good refrigeration at that time. Um, they used salt for preserving food. They'd put it on it, especially meat, to keep it. It preserves. So the world is being kept by the Christians in this world. 
uh, God is keeping evil back uh, because of us being here and also the prayer, although there's a lot of evil around it. If we were taken up and taken out, I think the world would basically go wild, in my opinion. Um, so we are preserving it with his righteousness and all. Fertilizing, it, it was used as a fertilizer. It was used for cleansing. I guess they put salt in wounds, I'm not sure. Uh, antiseptic, prevent growth of diseases and other uh, reasons for as an antiseptic. So there's different things that salt was used for. And so um, he just talked about the cutting off of the hand and the eye and the foot, you know, to get, cut all that stuff and that you need to be purified. And by the way, salt purifies as it cleanses. Um, it also, fire does too. You know, it really helps clean out uh, our sin. Like the Holy Spirit, there's a fire of hell and there's fires of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us fire. Like John mentioned that, by the way. He, talk, he talked about the eternal fire and they talked about we are to, to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. I think he's real talking about maybe there that the spirit of God comes and he purges us. It's like if you take a particular metal, let's say I have a metal right here on this end here and I put it in fire. Like if I put it right into this fire right here, I'm not going to, I don't want to melt this. But the, like, let's say I have gold in there, but I have like zinc and uh, like, I don't know, um, other minerals in there like lead or whatever. If I put it right in there and I would just hold it in there long, uh, it melts the other stuff, but the gold stays in there. God put, uses trials and persecutions and troubles and things like that. He allows us, he by his own power puts us through stuff. He allows Satan to come and attack us and all to help burn out the dross, the evils out of our lives. So that could be that uh, what he's saying is get all that taken care of instead of cutting, uh, uh, cut off the sin out of your lives and let God purify your soul and your life. Um, with the salt of, of God's Word, the salt of the Spirit, the fire of the Spirit. I'm not sure. Pretty interesting stuff. But everyone that shall be salted with, everyone shall be salted with fire. And every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. By the way, that's Leviticus 2. I think it's verse 13 or something, 3 or, I don't know. Leviticus 2 plus other places. They salted everything. They used salt and they put it um, on all the burnt offerings and the meal offerings, the cereal offerings and all, a lot of salt there. And uh, so it's a symbol, I think, of, of preserving and like I said, cleansing and all that. So uh, we are not only to sacrifice our, cut off our, not literally, remember, the hand and the eye and the things, the sins out of our lives and things that's gonna cause us to sin, uh, but we also literally are supposed to sacrifice our whole selves. So I've got a little picture here, not just of parts. He kind of combined these, these verses with each other and we get kind of a picture of what Jesus is maybe saying. He said, remember, if your, foot, uh, if your foot, uh, hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. And your eye, pluck it out. Now, he's not literally saying that. It's hyperbole. It's exaggeration. We talked about that in the last video. And Jesus is saying... Um, really go all the way. He went on and said, you know what? Go all the way and sacrifice yourself as a burnt offering. And uh, so we're supposed to give our whole self all the way, not just parts of ourselves. So maybe he elaborated, kind of explained more, went a little deeper into that because they knew what salt was used for. Um, and then he goes on and says, salt is good. It is, by the way. It's used for all those things I mentioned before, the five things. But if the salt has lost its saltness, like it loses its power. And by the way, in the, the Dead Sea was full of salt, like 33% of the Dead Sea um, was salt. And I've drawn that a lot, but let me kind of do it if you haven't seen this drawing. I'll do it real quick, uh, give you a picture of what that Dead Sea is. Now the Dead Sea was constantly mined for salt. Um, by the way, I got to swim in it, and ooh, is it concentrated with, uh, with salt, I'll tell you what. I could feel it. As a matter of fact, you're not supposed to stay in the Dead Sea swimming for more than, I think it was 15 minutes or something, 20 maybe. I went like a little bit too long and I felt a burning sensation on my skin. It was very intense. It's because of all that salt. And uh, so, by the way, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, that sea was called the Salt Sea. A lot of salt there. Maybe the sulfur and volcanic uh, area at one time, there was, it looks, seems like it was like a volcanic uh, area there. 
All right, oops, I blew my little drawing here. Something like this. So here's a Dead Sea and there's salt all over. As a matter of fact, it was, it actually kind of forms formations, crystallizes and all that in that area. And there's other minerals right there, um, like gypsum. Gypsum, gypsum uh, was there and other minerals. And what would, the salt could crystallize and sometimes the salt would lose its saltiness because of the other minerals and all that. And so they would take that salt and bring it to the tip of the court of women. And that one of the rooms, as I understand it, could be, was used for salt, like full of salt. Could be used for like um, ice. Sometimes it would snow, not a whole lot, but sometimes in Jerusalem it would snow. And they would throw out the salt. You've probably seen that before. They, they take the salt and they dump it out like this. The Levites were the uh, servants of the, of, the, uh, of the temple. And they'd throw it out there to be trodden under the foot of men. And Jesus said that, remember, in Matthew 5, we talked about that. How, um, I think it's, well, you're the salt of the earth. And if it's good for, uh, there's another place he actually mentions. If, you, if, it's, if it loses its saltiness, saltness, then it's good for nothing but to be trodden under the foot of men. People would walk on it. It could be used for gravel type stuff or maybe also melting ice. But it, it's really important to stay salty <laughs> and keep the fervency and the power of the spirit. Be on fire for God. So that this, our world is in darkness. You know, it's really super, super evil. And Jesus wants us to be full of the fire of the Spirit of God so that we shine. We don't let our uh, lights not shine. We don't hide it under a bushel. And, uh, and we certainly don't want Satan to blow it out. You know, keep blowing that, trying to blow it out. With God's help, we can stay strong in Him. He says, salt is good, but if the salt have lost its saltness, where, where shall it be seasoned? It, uh, uh, and then it goes on and says, have salt in yourselves, that preserving power, that salt that preserves us and links us and all. Have salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. See, they were arguing, remember, earlier, and he's kind of bringing that back, uh, back from what they were talking about, who's going to be the greatest, and he says, have peace within yourselves. And also, salt is like uh, used for food and fellowship together. And so uh, we need to be loving and seasoned with love and grace and kindness and patience with each other. So salt is really important here biblically. And he says, where, uh, he says, wherewith shall ye season it? Um, if you don't have salt, you can't really season it. It has no taste uh, if you put salt that's on food and it doesn't have any taste. And then he says, have salt in yourselves. So God is the one who provides everything that we need, salt or light and all that. And then he says, and have peace with one another. Have peace with one another. So we should be united in love um, through the fire of the Spirit of God and the salt of God's Word and what God puts in us. Uh, you know. So there you go. Hope that I hope you got something out of that. Um, challenging passage. I'm not sure exactly what it means. Maybe you have several meanings. Fire could mean the trials and the persecutions that we're going through and troubles, or it could be the fire of the Spirit of God, the fire of the, the holy purifying work of the Holy Spirit that purifies and, like I said, um, gets all the junk out of your life. Um, that could be the Holy Spirit, not just the trials and persecutions. It could be a combination of both. And salt is good and it's useful unless it loses its power. Don't lose the power in your life as a Christian. Stay salty for God and stay on fire for Him. Amen. Thanks for listening.